Hey, one another couples, does stress ever get you down? Today, we are going to have some furry animal friends to help us better represent and explain our stress response. We are Dr. David and Teresa Mabry with One Another Marriage, and we're so glad you joined us today. We're going to talk about stress animals, but before we do, We'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and like the video, share the video with those mm -hmm. as many people as possible can be helped by this. We love it. So spread the word as much as possible. We are glad you're with us today, especially since we're playing with animals. Yes. So many years ago, um, we actually learned about the stress animal styles. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to give credit to Dave and Claudia Arp, authors of 10 Great Dates. Mm -hmm. um, but they were the ones that um, we kind of learned it from, and we've used mm -hmm. it ever since. There are six animals, and mm -hmm. we actually have a representation of each one. And we're going to kind of unpack them for you a little bit, talk about them. But the whole premise and idea mm -hmm. is everyone feels stress. Yep. And mm -hmm. when that stress comes out, especially within our marriage and our relationship, we kind of respond in a dirty way, They're negative, in negative way. ways. Although these are all very cute stuffed animals. <laughs> they are. They're not cute when they come out in during times of conflict or stress. We've talked about before about how we move so much to our emotional brain mm -hmm. and instead of our thinking brain when we have conflict one with another. Mm -hmm. And it, c conflict is inevitable. So when stress and conflict happens, we go to one of these six animals that are defaults. Yeah. And what we're going to encourage, we'll give you the punchline now, we want to recognize the stress animal, we want to minimize the stress animal, and then we want to redirect sort towards something positive. So hang with us. We're going to cover six of these. And the first one is going to be... The skunk, yay. <laughs> so a skunk is the verbal, uh, they are a verbal sprayer. Mm -hmm. The response um, when you're in the midst of stress um, is to just verbally spray. It gets a little mm -hmm. stinky in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just responding a little bit more harshly or just responding, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you know, a That's verbal right. barrage of words coming out. That's right. So the next one would be a turtle. And so those that respond to stress and conflict as a turtle would be withdrawers. Mm -hmm. They withdraw into themselves during times of conflict. And so remember too that each one of these, a lot of people say, well, at least I'm not a skunk and I'm not a sprayer. But, yeah. but here's the deal. Each one of these n negates your partner. It yeah. minimizes your partner. So whether you are spraying or whether you're withdrawing, you are discounting your partner and you're discounting the conflict itself. So we want you to engage the conflict in a positive way rather than just withdraw like a turtle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to say um, that I uh, typically respond like a skunk. Um, and most of the time, 90% of females usually are skunks. And typically, I would respond like a turtle and withdrawing and that's something that from family of origin mm -hmm. and you may find that your stress animal which you probably have one or two dominant stress right. animals that you typically will go to may come from a family of origin as well right so for david and i in our marriage the more i spray the more he might withdraw the more he withdraws, the more I spray. So you can see how it just creates this lovely cycle, that's like going around and that's around. Right, that's right. Lovely is not lovely. the word I thought of. Sarcastically, I say that. That's right. All right, here's the next one. Aw, this one's so soft, too. Very no. soft. But this is the gorilla. Still bad. The gorilla. And the gorilla is someone who is a little bit of a bully. Mm -hmm. They can be pushy. Mm -hmm. um, very pushy, um, intimidating. So um, a gorilla is one I've also exhibited um, in the past, mm -hmm. and um, the combination of that gorilla skunk, ugh, that's that's not good. It's not good. So yeah. um, so you may identify with being a little bit of a gorilla, mm -hmm. um, just not letting things die, the stress um, that enters, and then the conflict that comes from that, and you just really you know you want to push your way mm -hmm. um, to to get it resolved or to, to have your way. So. That's right. The fourth one is the owl. The owl will intellectualize during points of conflict and stress. They get logical. And so they'll be like, well, honey, you know, nine out of 10 couples, when they do it this other way, that's the way we should do it. And 
honey, that's not logical the way that you're responding. And so imagine an owl, which is probably has been my secondary stress animal, how that comes across to your partner and yeah. how once again the how skunk once again. <laughs> may spray. Yes. So if you are an owl, you get logical during mm -hmm. times of stress and conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to, you kind of think, you think that you're staying in that thinking part of your brain, but really mm -hmm. you're, you are in that emotional part mm -hmm. kind of going through those facts or That's logic, right. right? Okay, number five. Oh, this we one is so big. I know. One. Um, this one's really, <laughs> really long, <laughs> really big, but this is the chameleon, mm -hmm. okay? Very colorful, right? And so the chameleon during a stress um, situation is going to try and distract. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to blend in, get along. So whatever's yep. going on, they want to take the focus off of that stress, right. right? A lot of times a chameleon will use humor yeah. um, to deflect, right? And to, uh, to distract people. This mm -hmm. is not one that is typical for David or I, um, but we definitely find a lot of people who do identify with the chameleon. Okay. That's right. And the final one is the mule or the donkey. And while he's, oh, how adorable he may be, he is not adorable when, uh, when faced with conflict or stress. Mm -hmm. The donkey or the mule will dig in their heels. They'll mm -hmm. be a foot dragger during conflict or during times of stress. And so things, uh, things may happen and they will purposely, even some call it stonewalling. Yeah. They will intentionally stop dead in their tracks mm -hmm. and that's their way of responding mm -hmm. and once again it negates your partner and negates the situation and the importance of the situation so which right. stress animal are you uh, do you recognize it then minimize it mm -hmm. and then redirect right right absolutely and so out of these six David already said like a lot of times one or two will rise to the top we are primarily talking about your marriage or your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, there could be some that you think, well, I exhibit this one kind of in the work setting or mm -hmm. this one is within the family setting. Um, but when you're looking at your relationship, which one or two kind of rise to the top for you? Mm -hmm. And just remembering that stress is inevitable, like yes. David shared earlier, and that conflict also is inevitable. That's right. Um, and there is a way that you can recognize and minimize these mm -hmm. to get out of that emotional part into your thinking part of your brain and be able to look at the situation more steady. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching today. If you're interested in this content and perhaps mm -hmm. connecting with Teresa and myself for a coaching relationship, reach out to us and we'd love to be able to meet with you. Find our website in the description below at oneanothermarriage.com.